It's not a school, really. Classroom is more like it. There's only 50 of us kids, so they shoved us all in one room with two teachers. Which is how I found out that everyone got a penguin plushie. I feel dumb thinking I was the only one. But also, it's kind of dumb of Clovis Bray to assume babies and big kids would want the same toy. Welcome back Guardians. In today's A Destiny 2 Lore episode, I wanted to talk about an extremely interesting character called Mika. Mika featured in the new lore book with Beyond Light called Your Friend Mika Abram. When you start digging into the story of this character, there is lore peppered everywhere. From the penguin collectible plushies, exotic armor lore, deep stone crypt raid gear, some cryptic in-game dialogue, and Mika has lore all the way back to Forsaken. I did not originally plan for this video to be in two parts, however once I started digging I really needed to do justice for this topic. This will be part one which will cover the childhood of Mika. While I enjoyed writing this script, I can't say I've been playing Destiny very much recently. If you are looking for a change of pace, I'm now live streaming every day over on Twitch. I will leave a link in the description. And at the moment, I'm playing Escape from Tarkov, where you can see me speak without a calm voice. I'm out of ammo! This is Marlin Games and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. Let's begin. The new lore book, Your Friend Mika Abram, is written from the perspective of Mika at the age of 10, when Mika moves from Mars to Europa. The letters read similar to that of a child's diary, where Mika is writing letters to the Traveller and documenting daily life and capturing Mika's inner thoughts. Mika has two fathers, one who is referred to as Papa and is a quantum engineer at Braytech, and the second who Mika calls Dad and is a psychologist. Papa, the engineer, is already working on Europa with Clovis Bray, and Mika and Dad, the psychologist, follows shortly after, moving from Mars to Europa. Both of Mika's dads are employed by Clovis Bray to work on the Exos. Have a listen to letter 2 from the law book Your Friend Mika Abrams. It reads, Still, I'm glad we're here. Seeing Papa again made me so happy I almost cried. I didn't know. Once on the way here, I forgot what his face looked like. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't see it in my mind. It was awful. He's grown a beard, so he looks different now. I like it. But Dad said he feels like he's kissing a polar bear. Papa said Dad will grow a beard too once he discovers how much warmer his face will be. Soon, you'll have two polar bears for parents, Mika. There are not many children on Europa, and it seems like any children who are there are likely the children of researchers and employees of Clovis Bray. Upon arrival of Europa, Mika received a penguin plushie, which I assume is the same as the penguin plushies you collect in-game. In fact, all of the children who arrived on Europa received the same penguin gift. Letter 4 from the law book Your Friend Mika Abrams reads, It's not a school, really. Classroom is more like it. There's only 50 of us kids, so they shoved us all in one room with two teachers. Which is how I found out that everyone got a penguin plushie. I feel dumb thinking I was the only one, but also, it's kind of dumb of Clovis Bray to assume babies and big kids would want the same toy. Some of the older kids threw theirs in the recycling chute, but I managed to rescue one. While on Europa, Mika is a pretty inquisitive child and gets bored quickly. Not helping the matter is everyone is kept in an underground colony and only maintenance people and the exos get to go outside. On the times they do venture outside, they need to wear an ion shield snowsuit to protect themselves from the environment. 
Through overhearing conversations, Mika begins to learn that her dad, the psychologist, is there to analyze the exos. However, it seems like Mika does not understand that exos are actually human or contain human minds. I got the impression that Mika just thinks exos are fun robots. Mika overhears both parents fighting, which reveals that the dad was working on trying to solve DER, dissociated exomind rejection, and potentially is the researcher who suggested giving exos their humanisms, feelings like hunger. Have a listen to letter eight, it reads, it got quiet then, for so long that I almost went back to bed when I heard Papa again. This DER stuff is hard, but I think the humanisms you suggested are the solution. In fact, I'll bet my life on it. Now here is where things start to get really interesting. Mika and her fellow classmates have a school excursion where they finally get to go outside. Protected by their ion shield snowsuits, they are meant to stay with a buddy. Mika decides to go find dad and papa who work in the exo factory. Rather than stay with a human buddy, Mika pretends that the two penguin plushies, named after the Ares 1 team, count as a buddy. And so technically, Mika is still following the rules and can freely explore. While trying to sneak into the Exo factory, Mika stumbles across two Exos speaking about being hungry. Mika is actually shocked by this revelation, and I think it is the first time that Mika starts to realize that Exos actually contain human minds. Have a listen, it reads. That's when I decided I'd learn more useful stuff over at the Exo factory with Papa and Dad. I didn't break the rules. The factory was in sight, plus I had two buddies, Mihalova and Calumet. I knew I couldn't go in the front door without a badge, so I went around the side to the loading bay where there were two Exos unloading a bunch of crates. They looked like they were almost done, so I hid under the dock to wait for them to leave. Instead, I heard one of them sit down. I'm taking a break. Need to or not, this is when we used to have lunch. I refused to work through lunch. And the other one said, I miss lunch. I miss getting hungry. Then the first one replied with this weird tone. Hmm. So you would say you're hungry for hunger? Which made them laugh for a long time. When they finally stopped, the second exo said, What do you tell that shrink, by the way? You tell him about the whisper? That's when I wanted to leave. I didn't like them making fun of dad. Plus, the way they talked about food and dreams, it made me feel sick. So sick that I guess I made a noise because then I heard, What was that? So I ran. I heard shouts behind me, footsteps catching up, a bang and a sizzle right over my head. Then two cold hard claws snatched me up. That's when I looked straight into its glowing blue eyes. So Mika overhears the exos speak about being hungry and the whispers. After gasping, Mika is shot at, chased and then caught by one of the exos. The story continues. Anyway, the exos caught me quick and one of them lifted me up so we were eye to eye. And I get why people are scared now. I mean, I was more scared of getting in trouble than anything else, but looking into those eyes was spooky. Almost like being somewhere so dark you can't see your hands in front of your face, though you can feel they're there. I couldn't look away even as I heard the other one asking what they should do with me, if it'd be easier if I just went missing. Then all of a sudden its eyes went dark and it fell to the ground. A second later it collapsed in a sparking metal heap next to me. Now we actually know who these exos are. If you read the Deep Stone Crypt raid gear, specifically the Legacy's Oath Helm, it reveals that this was in fact Cade, who shot at, chased and caught Mika before spontaneously collapsing in a heap. Have a listen to the Legacy's Oath Helm. It reads, Next to him, Nox four sighs with relief and longing. I miss lunch. I miss getting hungry. Cade grins, as much as his mechanical face will allow. Hmm, he intones in his best Dr. Abrams impression. So you would say, you're hungry for hunger? Knox bursts into guffaws. Cade chuckles weakly. It wasn't that funny, but as his friend's laughter grows, so does Cade's. Soon they're both clutching each other and howling. 
Then gradually their cheer fades. What do you tell the shrink, by the way? Knox asks. You tell him about the whisper? Cade shakes his head. Before he can snark about the uselessness of psychologists, the whisper rings in his metal skull. It's red sky in morning, sailor's warning, but you are no sailor. A whimper squeaks out from the loading bay. A moment later, a short, snow-suited figure scrambles out, racing for the far end of the factory. Caden knocks shout, taking off after the eavesdropper. No sharp shooter yet. Cade fumbles for his Braytech issued handgun, aims shakily, and... Man oh man, there is too much here to break down, which is why I need a second video. However, super interesting that Cade mentions the whisper, and specifically what it says. It's red sky in morning, sailor's warning. Which I believe is the saying for those at sea, and it relates to predicting weather patterns, and potentially dangerous sea. What is also interesting is the part about Mika. Why did Cade just fall over after picking up Mika and staring into Mika's eyes? Did it remind Cade about his memories of family? Was it something to do with Mika? Did he just have some sort of spontaneous reset? As far as I know, we don't have the answer to this yet, but Mika's story continues to get stranger. Mika has a recurring dream where Mika is an exo standing on a frozen lake and jumping high into the sky. Mika is jumping to reach the Traveller. Have a listen to letter 7 in the law book. It reads, It always starts the same. I'm an exo, standing in the middle of a frozen lake under a black sky and a white moon. For some reason, I start jumping, up and down, over and over. Each time I go a little higher and land a little harder. Sometimes I worry the ice might break, but then I hear a whisper, saying I'll be okay even if it does. I won't let you die before the interesting part. As I jump, the whisper goes, higher, higher. Or maybe it says, closer, closer. Maybe it's both. Last night I went so high, I almost left the atmosphere. From there, I could see that the moon was you, hovering above Io. Mika's dad, the psychologist, says this about dreams. Dreams are messages from deep inside our minds. Now, I want you to remember this information about the dreams, as this dream is very important for later in order to identify Mika in the future. But first, let me quickly finish summarizing what happens to Mika after being caught by Kate. Mika's parents are fighting, which Mika overhears, and it seems like Mika's dad wants to leave Europa. At the time, and as a child, Mika doesn't really understand why. As an audience though, we suspect that Mika's dad has discovered the unethical practices of Clovis Bray and wants no part in it. The book ends with Mika's dad, the psychologist, going missing, and then Mika planning on sneaking out of her house to find him. The final lore entry, letter 9, reads, Dad's been working even more. At first, I thought that meant he'd change his mind about leaving, but now I haven't seen him for a whole week and my stomach won't stop hurting. What has stopped is the dream. Two nights ago, I finally broke away from Europa's gravity. As I floated to you, the whisper followed. Are you sure you know what you think you know? I woke up before I got close to you, and last night, I didn't dream at all, which must mean I've figured out the message. But all I have are those words stuck in my head. Are you sure you know what you think you know? This morning Papa told me Dad's been sleeping at the factory because he's so busy, but soon he'll get a break, and then we'll spend the whole day together as a family. I'm not sure, but I think he's lying. Tomorrow this supply ship leaves for Mars. I want to go, so I've packed my bag and once Papa goes to sleep, I'm going to put on my snowsuit and go out to find Dad. I don't care if I run into a whole army of exos. The law book, Your Friend Mika Abram, ends there, but that is not the end of the story. We discover the reason to why Mika's dad wanted to leave Europa and Clovis Bray. It seems like Mika's dad discovered that Clovis Bray was mixing clarity, aka the darkness, and Vex milk into exos during the mind transfer. Have a listen to this lore entry from the exotic gauntlets, Icefall Mantle, where Dr. Abrams, Mika's dad is shocked by an exo-experiment. The law entry reads, 
The apparatus of the lab holds a test subject in a harness. No velvet glove, just rare metals woven round a form of similar complexity. The exo's body dangles and twitches, the puppeteer's presence sensed but unseen. The foreign energy courses again down through cords, the third surge and the strongest yet, making the puppet quiver and dance. Dr. Abram raises a hand to his mouth, which seems to climb to his eyes of its own accord. Through splayed fingers, he witnessed the triumph of the puppeteer as ice takes shape around the puppet like magic. We get further confirmation of why Mika's dad wanted to leave Europa. In the law tab for the ship, The Last Flight Home, Dr. Hector Abrams describes Clovis Bray's unethical experiments and also the farming and use of Vex fluid to create the exos. Have a listen to the law tab. It reads, In light of recent events, please accept this letter of resignation, effective immediately. I was led to believe the top minds would be assembled in a collective effort to cure Redacted. That was a lie. I'm requesting safe passage to Earth and to be removed from the Redacted. Redacted has demonstrated he is incapable of empathy and will travel to the furthest reaches of our solar system to avoid illegal ramifications to pursue his twisted vision. I quickly discovered his endeavor was less of a colony and more of a cult. You are either with him or against him. I was once his closest confidant, now I hardly recognize him. That was when I was made aware of the milky redacted substance. He was farming the redacted that passed through the redacted he constructed under mysterious guidance from their redacted. It is paramount you act quickly and decisively. These experiments would lead to large scale ruin far beyond Europa. The price is too high. Sincerely, Dr. Hector Abram. So what happened to Mika's dad, Dr. Hector Abram? Well, we assume that Hector Abram was converted to an exo. And we also have to assume that this was done against his will, considering his resignation letter. There is a lore entry, which is a recovered memory fragment from an exo called Hector VI, which I assume at one point was Dr. Hector Abram, Mika's dad. Well, you might be thinking that's not very conclusive. It could be just a coincidence. There could be more than one Hector. But let me show you this. I believe the same thing happened to Mika's papa, the engineer. Have a listen to this in-game dialogue from another EXO called Wesley 3. Any day now, it'll be time for another reboot. I have all the signs. They say I should do it now. Get it over with. But I... I don't want to forget. Not anymore. I try to record all I can, but... But how can I possibly describe how it felt to hold my son? My... Son? I had a... Is this the child in my dreams? The one that says... What does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and... And to walk humbly? with your God. So you might be thinking once again, this does not really prove anything. Could just be another exo who had a kid. However, the quote that you just heard is a Bible verse known as the Mika Mandate. This confirms Wesley as Mika's papa, the engineer who I think like Mika's dad was converted to an exo. So what happened to Mika? Last we heard was Mika tried to find dad sneaking off in the middle of the night. Well, you remember that dream Mika had? And Dad told her that dreams are messages from deep inside our minds? Well, have a listen to the Deep Stone Crypt raid armor that is narrated by an exo called, you guessed it, Mika 10. It reads, She's dreamt of it thousands of times, fought thousands of battles in the golden field beneath the Black Tower, and every 15th instance in the midst of the chaos, an older man puts a paternal hand on her shoulder and says, you just need to get acclimated. It's colder here than on Mars. Every hundredth time, she makes it into the tower and finds a different man sitting in an armchair, writing on a notepad. Dreams are messages from deep inside your mind, he reminds her. Until you figure out the message, the dream will repeat. This confirms that Mika 10 
is the child, Mika, from the law book that we have been talking about. The pronouns used for Mika 10 is she. However, Mika in the book is actually a young boy. I believe that this character is, I think, the first trans character in Destiny. And guess what? There is a ton more really interesting lore about Mika 10, which is what I'm going to cover in the next Destiny 2 lore episode. Mika's entire family, including Mika, were converted to Exos, likely against their will. The penguins on Europa remind us of every child who visited Europa and received a penguin as a gift. And now we must consider whether the penguins we collect in-game represent every lost child from the original Europan colony. Were they too made into test subjects, like Mika? With that, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can simply leave the word Mika. Stay tuned for part two. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.